These are the traditional images of Switzerland which have helped establish a picture postcard reputation. Scenes of degradation from one of the wealthiest countries on earth. Pretty much any time of the day, any day of the week, you can wander into this park in the Swiss capital, Bern, and see people injecting heroin. Now a program which allows addicts to get heroin on prescription is being challenged by groups which claim that the Swiss government has, in effect, become a drug pusher. If you get the drugs from the government or you get the drugs on the street, they're always poison, you know. So the Swiss are being asked to say yes to a referendum which would end the legal prescription of heroin and other drugs of addiction. What do you want? Mafia treatment or medical treatment? If you want mafia treatment, vote yes. If you want, if you want medical treatment, vote no. Over the years, Switzerland has adopted a highly flexible approach to drug law enforcement. With 30,000 addicts in a population of 7 million, Switzerland has a serious drug problem. Once upon a time, this was the centre of the heroin trade in Zurich. It was known as Needle Park. Police turned a blind eye and addicts could come down here and buy heroin, and even shoot up in the park, and plenty did. The theory was that if they were all centred in the one place, it'd be easier to control the trade. Well, it certainly made it easier for addicts and for dealers, but the whole scene quickly became unmanageable and started attracting just the sort of notoriety that the Swiss authorities definitely didn't want. A couple of years ago, they closed it down for the last time. And by that stage, Switzerland was already prescribing legal heroin to addicts. Evelyn has been using heroin on and off for the past 12 years. She's one of about 800 addicts who currently buy their drugs from the government. Twice a day, she goes to this clinic in Bern for a hit. I could never cope with my life so well like now. I, uh, I really can concentrate on the things uh, who are important, well, on, on life like everybody lives a life. She has to shoot up on site under strict supervision. First of all, you have a warm feeling. It's, it's really warm. And you feel tired a little bit, but really relaxed. And you feel fine. The heroin prescription program has taken addicts like Evelyn off the streets. In the streets I costed the people a lot of money, of taxes. And now I can so support myself. I even pay the drugs myself. I was clean for, let's say, between 10 or 12 months, which was the most. and. Uh, two or three days. Uh, I've, I've done at least 100 uh, attempts to, to withdraw. So what we are going to do here is to control everyone who looks like a drug, drug user. If someone has any, some sorts of uh, needle or uh, drugs on it, we arrest them and bring them back to the police station for another 24 hours. Thomas Hoog and his colleagues are part of the Zurich Police Force's drug squad. This is the Long Street, that's the, the red light district. The city's drug scene is fragmented and largely hidden. Deals are done in back alleys or in apartments. Someone made a phone call to the police. There is a drug deal on Long Street in the third floor of an apartment house. Going on now. Going on now. Hello? 
There's no way of knowing what they'll find behind the door. Passports, please. They're looking for cocaine. The tip-off, though, could be revenge between dealers or even an attempt to divert police. Outside, outside here. Hello. It's police work which has more than its fair share of frustrations. Well, what happened here that's exactly a drug use situations. You see the spoon here with some rest of the of cocaine, I think. Also here. And the, the rest, we are sure, is going through the toilets. We closed down the open drug scene here in Zurich in February 1995. Uh, more or less at the same time, these medical trials with uh, the prescription of heroin started. Uh, these trials helped us a lot insofar that uh, around 300 of the really heavy drug addicts had been absorbed by these uh, trials and they got their heroin every day uh, by the medical doctors. Switzerland's experiment with legal heroin has focused on a small number of long-term addicts. Evelyn is still addicted to heroin, but since she's been getting legal supplies, she's managed to cut her intake by two-thirds. Now she's got a job working in a restaurant and somewhere to live. She doesn't want to go back to life on the streets. The worst time was in winter when, for instance, it was raining or cold or snowing and just waiting there and feeling bad. That was the worst time, actually. Also, the time when I had to humiliate myself before people in order to get some money. In what sense? How? Begging in the streets, for instance, or even prostitution. I didn't do that very much, but I did it too. And I hated myself for this. The most positive aspect has been an improvement in health, a relatively low death rate. Death Dr. Rate Margaret Rees is the woman in charge of the prescription program. The first thing, we kept people from dying. That's the first important result. I mean, what sense is there in uh, having a wonderful treatment program and the people you want to treat are already dead? So that's, I think, a very big result. We should really emphasize that. There are other benefits. Addicts like Evelyn who get legal heroin commit fewer crimes and they're more likely to stay in treatment. That's critical if the eventual aim is to get them off drugs permanently. Can you see a day when you won't need heroin again? Yeah, the day I can replace it and the day I can take a choice when I can choose between taking or not taking. So it happened with the cocaine to me. That gave me hope I could, I haven't been taking cocaine anymore now for two years and I have absolutely no need to take it. I'm not looking for it and I don't feel anything when I think of it. Despite some obvious pluses from the legal heroin program, there are many within Swiss society who want to put a stop to it. Amen. Boris Pisky has a lot in common with Evelyn, including a decade on hard drugs. I used uh, uh, several drugs, uh, medicine, alcohol, hashish, uh, marijuana, heroin, 
cocaine and uh, methadone from the state. How did you pay for all this? I, uh, I was, uh, I was, I prostituted my life to homosexual uh, men. How long did you do that for? About six years. As I, I was working at the uh, uh, train station in Zurich, the big. I had a lot of connections. I had friends, rich friends, a lot of money in cars. The first years I thought uh, I had a good life, you know. But uh, after this time, I woke up one day and I saw now I'm drug addict. And it goes like this. Now married with two young children, Boris gave up drugs seven years ago, and he didn't need a heroin prescription program to do it. I was listening to the word of God, and then I changed my life. I knew that uh, only Jesus can help me to keep my life clean from all the sins and drugs and all the things I uh, saw during this time of drug using. I have decided to follow Jesus. Boris found God on the streets, and now he's part of a small community which bases its drug rehabilitation on total abstinence and strong Christian values. To follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Paul Stettler runs the centre. The rule here is no drugs at all, right down to decaffeinated coffee. They represent the core of people campaigning for an end to heroin prescription. Drug addicts need much more than heroin. That can never be the solution for them. They have to be brought away from the drug using. And you see the motivation to go in the heroin program is to get the heroin. But we should, should help for another motivation. We should help to leave the heroin. And this is not done. Trouble is, the path of total abstinence offers nothing to those who try and fail. I think people who are against um, the prescription of substances to addicts do not have a clear idea about the whole picture. And they do not ha have the responsibility of taking care of the health of the population. How much damage can they do? Well, they could kill people. As I said, it's uh, support mafia. It's, this will certainly support organized crime if the initiative ex is accepted. It will put uh, 40 or 15,000 people out on the street with all the crime that is associated with them. Um, and it will kill people. Switzerland's drug problems and its causes are not unique. The country's very affluence makes it an obvious target. The pressure to conform, which has brought prosperity to so many, has perhaps alienated others. The battle over legalised heroin in Switzerland is not just an argument about who pays to clean up the mess left behind by hard drugs. For prohibitionists, it's as much a moral issue as a practical problem. It also raises some fundamental questions about where the responsibilities of the state start and finish. Ultimately, it's a question not just of how kind a society should be, but what kind of society the Swiss want. It's a debate which pits the perfect world against reality. As a policeman, Thomas Hook knows that making drugs illegal doesn't stop people using them or supplying them. He's out combing the streets, trying to keep track of who's buying and who's selling. Yeah. Is there a lot of stuff around at the moment? Yes, there is a lot of stuff all the time. I mean, the, the federal police can collect 130 ki kilograms of heroin, and we don't uh, we don't see the situation here. If they, it makes no difference. No, it makes no difference at all. And this referendum 
if it uh, would succeed, would really have a big impact on the drug scene, a big negative impact. And I really do hope that this referendum will not succeed. The result from the police point of view would be that at once we would have a new open drug scene in the city of Zurich and probably as well in other cities of Switzerland and for sure these would be again large open drug scenes. Praise the Lord. It's easy to understand why Boris wants a total ban on the supply of hard drugs. He sees the prescription program institutionalising the terror he finally managed to escape. One day you will find a bus uh, driver, he injects heroin. One day you will find somebody who is working in a very uh, a difficult job. He's a drug user. One day you, you're going to the hospital. You may have a, a heart operation, you know, and uh, the doctor, he's a drug user. One day it will be like this. And that's a big problem. One day our children have a, a teachers. They will be drug users. But what worked for Boris hasn't worked for Evelyn. I would be forced to go to the streets again, maybe lose my job sooner or later. Quite sure that I would lose my job again. And I would be at maybe at the same point from three years ago. It's a basic issue is giving, give, do you give support and perspective to people who are deeply in drugs, or do you feel this part of society does not exist and we do not have to take care of it? Only in Switzerland, perhaps, will you see heroin addicts dutifully sweeping up their empty syringe packets under police supervision. And if the country votes to end legal heroin prescription, many more of its streets and parks might once again become shooting galleries.